In 2012, one of the most important discoveries in the history of dinosaur science was announced. Three nearly complete skeletons belonging to a new species of carnivorous theropod had been found with feathers around their bodies. Named Eutyrannus hualai, the beautiful feathered tyrant, it was found in the Yixian Formation in northeastern China. This region is famous for its excellently preserved fossils of feathered dinosaurs, most of which come from Eutyrannus' branch of theropods, the Silurosaurs. What set Eutyrannus apart from the other feathered Silurosaurs was its size. All previously discovered feathered dinosaurs were small creatures, and it had been assumed that the larger dinosaurs lost most of their feathers. Yet this unambiguously feathered theropod was 9 meters long and weighed nearly 1.5 metric tons. The previously largest known feathered dinosaur, the small basal Therizinosaur Bapausaurus, was 40 times smaller than Eutyrannus. Most of the other dinosaurs with preserved feathers were dwarfed by even this modest Therizinosaur. The size of this new theropod was surprising in more ways than one. It belonged to the clade Tyrannosauroidea, making it a relative of the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. However, Eutyrannus lived between 130 to 120 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous. Most other early Cretaceous Tyrannosauroids were small to medium-sized predators, and the ancestors of Tyrannosaurus only even began to approach the size of Eutyrannus about 90 to 80 million years ago during the late Cretaceous. The beautiful feathered tyrant seems to have become an apex predator independently from the lineage of Tyrannosauroids which led to the later Tyrant King. As a basal Tyrannosauroid, Eutyrannus differed in many ways from Tyrannosaurus and its more familiar relatives the Tyrannosaurids. The most obvious difference is that while the Tyrannosaurids had tiny arms with only two fingers, Eutyrannus' forelimbs were much longer and had three fingers tipped with large, curved claws. There is no doubt that it used them as effective weapons. Tyrannosaurids were specialized bone crushers, which they accomplished with their wide, robust skulls and wide, almost banana-shaped teeth. In sharp contrast to the later tyrants, Eutyrannus' skull was narrower and its teeth were strongly compressed on the sides. They were built to slice through flesh rather than pulverize bone. Although Eutyrannus had a much weaker bite than its late Cretaceous relatives, Tyrannosaurus were exceptional among the theropods, and its jaws were still quite powerful. In contrast to its more dagger-like teeth, those at the end of the snout were small and D-shaped, which was typical of Tyrannosauroids both large and small. Still, Eutyrannus' arsenal was more like that of carnosaurs such as Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. There's quite a bit of irony here. Although it is now clear that they were gigantic Silurosaurs, Tyrannosaurs were once considered to be the last and most extreme of the carnosaurs. Eutyrannus was a Tyrannosauroid who was built like the contemporary carnosaurs. Unlike most basal Tyrannosauroids, but like both Carnosaurs and the later Tyrannosaurids, Eutyrannus' skull was deep and proportionally large. This allowed for it to support larger jaw muscles and shows a shift towards hunting larger prey than the other basal Tyrannosauroids. Tyrannosauroids more closely related to the Tyrannosaurids still had smaller low skulls, so this was clearly the result of convergent evolution. Due to the greater weight of the larger skull, it was necessary for Eutyrannus' neck to become shorter to support it. Eutyrannus' nares, the openings in the skull which held the nostrils, were large and elongated, matching those of its smaller cousins instead of the Tyrannosaurids. As in all other Tyrannosauroids, the nasal bones themselves were fused. Eutyrannus possessed a long rugose crest that ran along its snout. This crest bridges the gap between basal and derived Tyrannosauroids. Many of the basal species had larger, more elaborate crests. The tops of Tyrannosaurid snouts retained the rugose texture of Eutyrannus' crest, but the bumpy structures they supported were far more subtle. Eutyrannus also had small horns before its eyes, another derived trait shared with the Tyrannosaurids. The purpose of these crests and horns was to help attract mates or scare off rivals, and in life, they would have made Eutyrannus all the more beautiful. An additional attribute of the later tyrants foreshadowed in Eutyrannus was speed. Tyrannosaurids were able to run much faster than most other large theropods, although the bulkiest species like Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus were only able to do so when they were not yet fully grown. 
the proportions of U. Tyrannus's legs were almost on par with those of Tyrannosaurids, which would have made it far faster than most of the contemporary carnosaurs. Juvenile U. Tyrannus had proportionally longer legs than adults, suggesting they may have been even faster. The most revolutionary trait found on U. Tyrannus was its namesake feathers. Their impressions have been found on its tail, pelvis, upper arms, close to its feet, and on its neck. Given their distribution, it is thought they covered most of U. Tyrannus' body. The longest feathers were those on the neck, which measured 20 centimeters long. The feathers found on U. Tyrannus are not the same as the complex pinaceous feathers seen in birds today, which are only found in the clade Menoreptoriformes. They instead consisted of simple filaments more like the down of bird hatchlings. Eutyrannus is thought to have primarily used these simple feathers, sometimes called protofeathers, for thermal insulation. Dinosaurs had higher metabolisms than most other reptiles, which helped them become more active, grow quickly, and to thrive in colder climates. Fueling this metabolism required burning vast quantities of energy, so keeping the heat their bodies produced became a major evolutionary priority. Additionally, these simple feathers may have also served a role as display structures. Even though they were not as complex as bird wings, feathers that appear to have been used for display are found in other silurosaurs, and even the contemporary and otherwise scaly Ornithischian dinosaur, Cetacosaurus. There was already speculation that Tyrannosaurus and the other Tyrannosaurids had feathers due to the discovery of the small feathered Tyrannosauroid Dilong in 2004. But Eutyrannus proved that large dinosaurs could retain extensive feathery coats. However, further discoveries have found small-scale impressions on various parts of Tyrannosaurus's body, showing it was not so fluffy after all. If a composite is made of all Tyrannosaurid skin impressions, areas where feathers are preserved in Eutyrannus turn out to be scaly, and there is no room for the large, fluffy coat found in the beautiful feathered tyrant. This doesn't mean the Tyrannosaurids lost all of their feathers, Given their smaller size, juveniles may have been as feathery as Eutyrannus or Dilong, and adults may have retained a few feathers, but it does seem they had an at least predominantly scaly integument. The Tyrannosaurids are not unique in this regard. Although primitive feathers seem to have been present in the very first dinosaurs, they were lost multiple times as they grew in size. When animals reach a certain size, thermal insulation is no longer necessary on most of the body. Indeed, many of the Tyrannosaurids would have been in danger of overheating if they kept the fluffy coats of their smaller ancestors. The question then is why Eutyrannus remained so fluffy. Some of the Tyrannosaurid scale impressions come from species of roughly equal size as the feathered tyrant, and more extensive scale impressions are preserved on the holotype of the theropod Carnotaurus. This horned theropod was an abelosaurid, meaning it was not closely related to the Tyrannosauroids but it was about the same size as Eutyrannus. The answer is the climate Eutyrannus inhabited. Whereas Carnotaurus and most Tyrannosaurids are found in tropical or subtropical habitats, the environment preserved in the Yixian Formation had an average temperature of only 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The winters here would have been freezing, so Eutyrannus would have continued to benefit from the warmth its feathers provided. Besides the climate, the dense forests of the Ixian Formation would have created more shade than more open environments. That is not to say heat would never have been a problem for Eutyrannus. It may have shed its longer feathers during the summer months, much like how many of today's mammals from similar environments shed their winter coats. There was one Tyrannosaurid who lived in conditions similar to Eutyrannus, the Alaskan Nanooksaurus. Although temperatures were higher during the late Cretaceous, the arctic home of this polar tyrannosaur was still slightly colder than the Yixian formation. Likewise, Nanooksaurus was about the same size as Eutyrannus, although most reconstructions, including its appearance in Prehistoric Planet, are based on the remains of juveniles. Therefore, Nanooksaurus likely had a feathery coat like that of Eutyrannus. Still, it seems Eutyrannus was the exception among large dinosaurs. As of right now, it remains the largest one unambiguously preserved with feathers. However, the bizarre dino Chiris had a pygostyle, a bone used to anchor large feathers at the end of its tail. Given the warmer climate it inhabited and its greater body size, dino Chiris likely only retained large display feathers in places like its tail or arms.
Despite most reconstructions giving it a similar integument as other ornithomimosaurs, this would have left it vulnerable to heat stroke. At the very least, the gap between U. Tyrannus and the second largest dinosaur with preserved feathers has shrunk. Feathers were found on Dinochirus's smaller relative, the North American Ornithomimus, the same year as U. Tyrannus. U. Tyrannus was once considered to belong to a branch within Tyrannosauroidea called Proceratosauridae. These basal tyrannosauroids are notable for their massive crests. Although most of them were small, the Proceratosaurid Sinotyrannus was about the same size as U. Tyrannus, and it was once thought to be the closest relative of the beautiful feathered tyrant. However, a recent monograph detailing the anatomy of the Tyrannosauroid Eotyrannus concluded that U. Tyrannus was instead slightly more closely related to the Tyrannosaurids than the Proceratosaurids were. U. Tyrannus' cranial gear, which seems to be transitional between that of Proceratosaurids and Tyrannosaurids, certainly supports this position. It therefore seems that Sinotyrannus obtained its massive size independently of both U. Tyrannus and the Tyrannosaurids. The same monograph found that there may have been a fourth group of large Tyrannosaurids, the Megaraptorans, whose massive arms made those of U. Tyrannus look puny in comparison. However, the classification of these theropods is controversial, and they may instead belong elsewhere in Silurosauria or within Carnosauria. Regardless of just how closely related Sinotyrannus was to U. Tyrannus, it lived in China not long after the beautiful feathered tyrant. Throughout the rest of the world, most of the top predators were carnosaurs, like the deep-skulled Carcharodontosaurids and the long-snouted Spinosaurids. Ceratosaurs, like the Abelosaurids, were also sizable carnivores, although they were restricted to the southern continents. The giant dromaeosaurid Utahraptor was previously thought to have lived 125 million years ago, but it has recently been determined that Utahraptor was 10 million years older than previously believed. In any event, none of these dinosaurs were present in China during the reign of these two basal tyrannosauroids. Likewise, China is the only region with large tyrannosaur fossils dating to the early Cretaceous. Utahraptor and Sinotyrannus seem to have managed to carve out their own little kingdom rising to the top of the food chain during a time when the other tyrant dinosaurs were still underdogs to the carnosaurs. There is evidence that Eutyrannus hunted in packs. All three skeletons were found together. They consist of an adult, subadult, and juvenile. Similar mixed age groups of large theropods, including the fellow tyrannosaurids Teratophaneus and Despletosaurus, have been interpreted as packs. Eutyrannus coexisted with large sauropod dinosaurs who would have been too dangerous to confront alone, but working together would have given the beautiful feathered tyrant a chance. Given the presence of sauropod bones at the same site as the Eutyrannus skeletons, it has been hypothesized they died when one of these hunts went terribly wrong. However, it is also possible they instead fell victim to a predator trap or even a Komodo dragon-like feeding frenzy. Besides allowing U. Tyrannus to take down the local long-necked titans, hunting in groups would have also been useful against less daunting prey. There is a hypothesis that Tyrannosaurid juveniles helped to lure animals into the jaws of the more powerful but slower adults. Given how the younger U. Tyrannus had proportionally longer legs and adults had proportionally larger skulls, the same may have been true of them. It has been questioned whether Tyrannosauroids possessed the intelligence to hunt in a coordinated manner but this was not strictly necessary. Today's Cuban crocodiles are able to hunt cooperatively, and although their intelligence is often underestimated, they are no more intelligent than U. Tyrannus was. The younger tyrants would have simply needed to catch their victims, giving the adults time to finish them off. Despite the Yixian formation being one of the richest Mesozoic sites, U. Tyrannus is one of the few large dinosaurs found there. The only other examples are the Iguanodontians Bolong and Jinzusaurus and a handful of sauropods. The small, possibly semi-aquatic ankylosaur Liaoningosaurus might also be the juvenile form of a larger ankylosaur. Eutyrannus could have certainly hunted the smaller species of dinosaurs, yet it would be easy to get the impression that there wasn't enough food available for the feathered tyrant. The seeming overabundance of small dinosaurs in early Cretaceous China is the result of preservation bias. It is not just the fossils of small dinosaurs which are more common there, 
but also the remains of other tiny creatures like mammals, lizards, and even insects. Because their bones are much more fragile, animals of this size are less likely to be preserved, so the sturdier bones of medium to large-sized dinosaurs are usually overrepresented in the fossil record. In contrast, most fossils from the Yixian Formation were preserved by the ash created from continuous volcanic eruptions, which created a less biased example of the local fauna, and in exquisite detail no less. It was this volcanic activity that fossilized the three nearly complete skeletons of this early tyrant and its beautiful feathers. Although most comparable dinosaurs were probably not as fluffy, Eutyranus has certainly changed how the large theropod dinosaurs are perceived, showing they were much more bird-like than once envisioned. Eutyranus has also helped bridge some gaps in the evolution of Tyrannosauroidea, and provided further evidence of pack hunting in the large theropods. However, while most of the other large predatory theropods belong to a handful of groups, Eutyranus obtained its size independently of any other known species, setting it apart from all other dinosaurs. The beautiful feathered tyrant is without a doubt one of the most significant dinosaurs ever discovered. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to the Mandalorian for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Finally, be sure to have a great day.